Okay, girls, today is the big day. Are y'all ready? Yeah? Ready to mosey on over there to some good stuff? What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a wonderful day. Today on the homestead, we're gonna move our chickens over here to our no-till plot with this lush cover crop on it. Gonna talk a little bit about that system. It's a big day for the chickens. I'm pretty excited as well. And then later on in the video, we're gonna talk about our succession plan with watermelons. I mentioned that a little bit on our garden tour video, our last video we had talk a little bit more about that today and my plans going forward for that so here's where the chickens will be grazing soon this is our oldest no-till plot about two years into this no-till system here of layering compost on top of compost and we've got a beautiful lush cover crop in here and this is probably I'd say two weeks old or so so once it germinates it gets up growing really really fast so we've got two different cover crops in here. We have this forage sorghum. You can see right there the leaves kind of look like corn leaves, not quite as wide. And then we have our red ripper peas in here. I like these better than iron clay peas as a cover crop. So we've got both of those in there. This pea, this red ripper, if you've never grown it, it is a climbing pea. You can eat it, but the chickens also love it as well. When we grow these together like this, we get a nice dense vegetation canopy like you see here now on that last garden tour video i told y'all i was gonna wait till this got about 18 to 24 inches tall before i put the chickens on there and then i was looking at it today and i got to thinking well as fast as this stuff is growing and because we'll be moving the chickens around via the chicken tractor meaning they won't eat it all at one time I need to go ahead and put them on it now because by the time they make it from one side of the plot to the other, this stuff might get too tall for me to effectively maneuver the chicken tractor around there. So we need to go ahead and get them started on it because the other side of it could be three or four foot tall by the time they make it over that way. And it looks like we've got an extra chicken in the pen there. What's this chicken's name? He's a good bit bigger than the rest of them. <laughs> you having fun petting the chickens? These hens are so sweet. I really like these breeds we have here. They are really docile and easy to pet and just uh, it's fun for the kids to get in there and play with them too. So before we make the big move, we need to get the eggs out of here. Probably need to put them some more bedding in here, refresh their bedding a little bit. Looks like it's running out. We got what, five eggs today? Yeah. That's pretty standard. Some days we get six. Usually we always get five. Or four. Or four. I think it depends on what time we're picking them. Sometimes I'll come in here late in the afternoon, there'll be one sitting. You see some of them are lighter, some of them are darker. We got three or four different breeds in there, so kind of a <laughs> nice little montage of colors. So we're gonna take our little bedding pan out of here. Slides right out the back just like that. Take this over to the compost pile. So sometimes I'll dump this in the garden if I've got a row of something that's kind of a heavy feeder, like we had our garlic growing. I dumped it between those garlic rows several times, but I don't really have a good place in the garden to put it right now, so it's not gonna hurt to add it to these compost bins. I'll dump it in this one one time or this time. Next time I'll dump it in that one over there. Yeah, I don't know where our worms went, buddy. All right, so we got our bed and refilled. We'll slide this back in there. Get it pulled all the way to the front. There we go. Now it's in place. We'll get our water out of here. Watch out, girls. Get that block out. <laughs> Those two red ones always trying to get out. Yep, they're the most friendly. Now we're going to use our chick lift here. Lift up the back end. And we're ready to move. Oh, cause I know that today holds more. Yeah, so much more. All right, so we made the move pretty easy. It's a lot easier to drag that thing over grass than it is 
soil so we just took it easy slowly bumped it along we got the girls in here now I put this as close to those leaks as I could and as you can see they're in there grazing away already they're on the good stuff now y'all like that a lot better it's a lot better than that chicken food ain't it look at them they're happy as they can be honey what were you saying about them needing some dirt to brush up on their feathers <laughs> they like to take those dust baths so they liked it when they were over there in that dirty spot i kept seeing them like sunbathing like laying and getting their feathers all dusty so they'll like this a little better than being so. on the grass because yeah. they can uh yeah they can move that dirt around and I think it's crazy how quickly you've trained them. Like how they know to sort of, like they'll walk with it. And there's one really smart one who jumps on the ramp and rides it the whole way. Yeah, the first, we've come a long way since yeah. the first time when we moved it. Yeah, they'd get nervous. But I mean those, the little wood thing is sort of right behind their feet and they keep up with it. I think it's funny how now they're quiet. It's like when they were over there and they saw you moving around, they were ready. They're like, Rrr. they were loud, yeah. They were loud. They were talking loud. Now and they, now they're here. They're like, okay, I need no, no more talking. No time for talking now. It's eating time. <laughs> and some of this cover crop will get trampled a little bit as we come in here, change their water, that kind of stuff. But from my experiences, this sorghum sedan grass is pretty resilient and it should pop back up. And just like we did with that clover back in the fall and winter, my plan here is to move these guys every day and not give them any chicken food. I'm going to be interested to see if our egg production falls off any by not giving them any chicken food. They've been eating a lot of chicken food lately since we've been bumping them around on the grass. But now they got plenty to eat here. We're going to let them forage all this stuff they should be able to clean up what's underneath the chicken tractor in just one day we'll move them every day put them on fresh stuff to eat and we'll just see how the egg production goes if the egg production just drops off drastically i will start supplementing a little chicken feed if not we'll just keep doing what we're doing and like i said earlier while it is probably a little too early to be putting them on this cover crop when it's this tall It'll take them, I don't know, three or four days to make it to the end of this row here. And by the time they get way over there, this stuff's gonna be pretty tall. So we had to go ahead and get them started on it. Cause if it gets really, really tall, we're not gonna be able to move that chicken tractor through there very easily. I'd like to keep this somewhat manageable. And I'm hoping that leaving them on it one day, like we're planning to do, it'll grow back nicely and we can rotate them around this plot two, maybe even three times. So now that the chickens are settled in their new spot, let's slide on over here to where some of our flowers are. Miss Brooklyn wants to cut her a little bit. And I'll show y'all a little trick here about how to keep these zinnias from getting too top heavy and falling over. What's the trick? So the trick is what you just did there. Oh, okay. So when you trim these first blooms, you wanna go all the way down to where it splits off there and cut them right there even if you don't need that long of a stem you can trim off the stem later but you want to cut them all the way back with that first bloom and that'll help make the plants more bushy as opposed to getting real top heavy so they won't blow over by the wind now we didn't know which colors we were going to get here because we planted a mix and we just got a few plants here probably 10 plants but it looks like we've got a good mix of colors orange red purple yellow even got white in here and while we're out here might as well get some of these giant marigolds here so hold up the stem on that one so that's why we like these giant ones because they got a longer stem you can put them in a vase thick. like the little marigolds it's, it's so thin it'll break oh uh, yeah these hold up a lot better don't they and might as well grab a few snapdragons here surprised that these are still hanging on as hot as it's been but They've got a little shade here from this pecan tree, which is helping them out. These later blooms don't look quite as big and full as those first ones did, but still getting a little bit off of them. You got a nice little cosmopolitan mix there, don't you? Uh-huh. I like to go and grab stuff by the pond too to add in here. Oh, like weeds and stuff? <laughs> yeah. You can't tell they're weeds though when you mix them with flowers. Oh, uh, that's true. It looks very <laughs> it look looks expensive this. Might have to change the name to Lazy Cat Farm. <laughs> Tiger, you on rat patrol or are you just chilling in the shade? 
There's lazy cat number two sleeping on the job. Chloe, you ain't gonna kill any rats laying there like that on your back. Chloe. She is out. <laughs> Wake up. And now, as promised, let's talk a little bit more about our watermelon plan here. Now, Titus is inside taking a nap right now, but if he wasn't, he would be out here asking me when these watermelons are gonna be ready. He asks me every single day, when are we gonna have a watermelon ready? I'm ready to try one, but he's especially ready to try one. And so me and Titus have been keeping a real close eye on this one right here. This is an orange crisp seedless watermelon. That's not near as big as I think it will eventually get. I need to look up and see what the maturity size is on these. But if we look right here, it's kind of shaded. I don't know if you can see. There's the tendril, and it's still green. So still got a ways to go. It hasn't even started drying up yet. And from my experiences, with that first watermelon that's ready, you got to wait a little longer after that tendril goes completely dry because the last thing you want to do is pick that first watermelon and it not be just perfectly ripe. So we'll wait till the tendril dries a little bit. We'll wait a few more days. That's not the case with the other watermelons because usually we don't find those in there the day the tendril goes completely dry. Usually when we find them in the air, that tendril's been dry for a few days and they're pretty much good and ripe. So we have to be cautious. We can't harvest this one too early. I'm gonna keep an eye on that tendril, but I'm gonna give it a few more days after it goes completely dry. And so this is our first time growing no-till watermelons. We converted this plot to no-till back last fall. Had some issues getting the transplants up and going, but the ones that made it are looking really good. Now we have all these rows on drip tape. The nice thing about this plot, this no-till plot, is we haven't had to water it that much. We've had to water a lot of our other plots a lot because it's been so dry around here. But let me show you something even between these rows where the drip tape is not watering. So if we scratch down a little bit where this rock is sitting, you can see right there, man, we got lots of good, good moisture. You can see you can pack that into a little ball there. Got a lot of good moisture right below that first couple inches of compost there. And this spot right here hasn't been receiving any irrigation by me. This is still there, still conserving a lot of moisture from the little bit of rain that we've got. And that's why we haven't had to water these watermelons a whole lot. Now, in addition to the moisture conservation, we know from grow outs in our other no-till plots with pumpkins last spring and onions this past fall and winter, that in these no-till plots, we seem to have a lot less disease issues. We didn't have hardly any disease issues on those no-till pumpkins, no mildew issues on those onions as well, and no disease issues I'm seeing so far on these watermelons, although the conditions have been really, really hot and we would usually be seeing some disease by now. And as a result, since things are looking so well, the moisture is being conserved so well, I think we can just keep growing watermelons in here all throughout the warm growing season. Now, if you've been watching our videos for a while, you know that we love to experiment with new techniques, kind of test the boundaries on what we can get away with as far as growing food here in our backyard garden. Now, I've never seen anyone around here growing fall watermelons, and I don't really know why, but I'm willing to give it a try this year. I have seen the commercial growers around here grow fall cantaloupes, but not fall watermelons. Now, in this plot, we somewhat succession planted these rows of watermelons, and that was intentional. We tried that last year. It worked pretty well, so we did it again this year. So we planted a couple rows, waited a few more weeks, planted a couple more rows, that kind of deal. And the reason we did that is because we want to stagger the harvest. I don't really need to harvest 20 watermelons at one time. I can put a dent in them, Titus especially can, but we really can't eat that many watermelons at one time. So it would be better for us to have a staggered harvest where we can come out and pick, you know, five or six a week and really have time to enjoy them all. So that's what we've done here, and I think we can keep doing that on through the summer. 
because if we've got plenty of soil moisture, which we do, and we're not gonna have a lot of disease issues in this no-till plot, which we haven't so far, it should work. Now our greenhouse here is usually pretty slow this time of year. Not a whole lot going on in here. As you can see, I've got all my heat mats rolled up there. It'll be a while before we need those again. Over here we have a few fig trees that I need to plant, some new varieties I acquired. I need to get those in the ground. I've got to extend my irrigation system out there a little bit. Just got some leftover stuff here, a couple extra flowers. Some of those Alibaba watermelons that took forever to sprout. Just some extras I've been hanging on to. But right here, we've got a tray I just started last week. And most of this stuff is sprout. So my father-in-law recently moved to a new place. He's got a garden for the first time now. He's got some of that solstice sweet corn planted. It's doing pretty well. He wants to grow some watermelon and cantaloupes. I told him, well, maybe it's a little too late for that. But his new garden is kind of partially shaded by a lot of trees. And as I told you, the commercial guys around here do fall cantaloupes. So I thought, well, we can give it a try in his garden. It's not going to hurt anything. Personally, we don't eat cantaloupes. I don't really care for them. But he wanted some cantaloupes. I was going to grow him out some cantaloupe plants and some watermelon plants. And figured might as well start a whole tray and we can give this fall watermelon thing a try. And because we're not really trying to save watermelon seeds, we can grow a lot of different varieties in the same plot. So we've got some Bradford watermelons here. It's a pretty old variety from what I understand. A viewer sent us a packet of those. Just got a few of those germinating. They haven't germinated that well. I bought a couple packets last time I was in Tractor Supply. Some Bush Sugar Baby. They germinated just okay. Bought a packet of Crimson Sweet. That's always a decent one. Those germinated pretty well. Got a decent amount of plants here. And then we got these cantaloupes here. So I grew some honey rocks for him. And then these are some varieties that were sent to us by Heavenly Hills Homestead. This one here is called Delice, I think. We got one called Rich Sweetness and then a giant cantaloupe, I believe. So good little variety of cantaloupes there and watermelons. So my father-in-law is going to get a good many of those plants for a big patch in his garden. But I'm also going to take a few of those watermelon plants and just kind of plug and play in some blank spots in this plot right here. And if I give them enough space to kind of grow, I think we can have several, several, several successions of watermelons coming out of this plot. So although our transplant survival rate in that last planting wasn't that great, it might not be a bad thing because we have a few little spots here. We can plug in some new plants and maybe have a more continual harvest. So we're definitely gonna have watermelons in July. We've got lots of fruits out here. We know that's a sure thing. But what if we had watermelons in August, September, maybe even into October? I think it'd be a lot cooler if we did. And the thing is, I really don't have any immediate plans for this plot as soon as this first or second round of watermelons is done. So it's not gonna hurt anything to try if it doesn't work it doesn't work no big deal we'll scrap it plant a cover crop there we haven't really lost anything but i think it's worth a try since we have a little space in here and the no-till plot's doing so well we might as well see if it can be done so i hope you enjoyed the video today good to go ahead and get those chickens moved so they can start grazing start putting down some nitrogen in that plot there and my long-term plan is by next spring, so spring of 2023, to have let the chickens graze on every single plot we have here at Lazy Dog Farm. So all 10 plots, I wanna be grazed by next spring. So either that's growing a warm season cover crop between now and October, or a cool season cover crop between October and say March. It will vary from plot to plot, but in every single plot, I want to have a cover crop in it, and I want to have that cover crop grazed by the chickens before next spring. I don't have this mapped out on a sheet of paper or anything yet, so it's just kind of preliminary in my head, but that's my general plan is to have every plot with some chicken manure on it come spring. And be sure to let me know what you think about my fall watermelon plan. Good idea, bad idea, or 
no idea, but I'm really interested to see. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to check out our affiliate links below. A lot of great companies that we use in our gardens here at Lazy Dog Farm. Even got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts. Be sure to go check out our website, LazyDogFarm.com, where we've got recipes, our garden blog, recommended products, hats, shirts, all kind of good stuff over there. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Oh, well, mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life.